Hi, Ray Siebert, here today to talk about version 7 iTrace software. It's exciting, a lot of interesting things to know about. Let's take a look. This is a summary and an overview of what's in version 7 software. First of all, tear film analysis. It's pretty exciting when you think about it. You take a corneal topography placido image and you project a known pattern of rings on an unknown tear film. If you can do that and take three scans a second for 12 seconds, you have a very accurate model of how the tear film is changing over time. And so this exam process creates a tear film index, a numerical objective number of how stable that tear film is and how the quality of the rings and the ring edges change over time. We then look at a zonal heat map that looks at where the degradation in the ring patterns are. And then you can actually watch a 12 second video. So let's take a look at what that looks like. A proprietary algorithm gives you a zonal read of where the changes are, and you can play the video. And this video allows you to look at the changes over time in the placido rings. And as you look at that, it, it allows you to look at the changes of the placido image and where they're changing. In this case, you saw a lipid wave move across, which actually means their tear film is worse right after a blink, but then it gets better, which is also an odd kind of a dry eye. And uh, when you have this lipid problem, um, it's difficult to diagnose, but the eye trace will help you. So you're taking three topographies a second for 12 seconds. We're measuring the tear breakup time. We're visualizing the lipid waves, and we're tracking the placido changes over time. It's a really exciting time for tear film analysis. The industry is finally looking at dry eye as a major reduction in video quality, or vision quality, sorry. Uh, we've also added some advancements to the wavefront capture process. One of the, maybe the only uh, uh, flaw in the eye trace is it's a little, been a little tech dependent, and this is going to eliminate that. We're actually taking three wavefronts in a short pattern right after a blink, so the tear film is stable and consistent. And those three are then averaged, and the, the best one is selected by the machine. And so we're actually using the patient's blink to set the timing of the wavefront scan. So you have a very stable, best optics situation. And then you take three scans and you average them. They have to be in a tight tolerance. So our auto fractions will be better. There'll be less uh, 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 bad exams and it'll be less operator dependent. In addition, you can now take external photography, both color and infrared. The infrared of the lower lid obviously would give you some mybography information if you're interested in dry eye. And a color image can be uh, uh, used for capturing external uh, issues like pterygium, scars, uh, other pathologies on the cornea. In addition, there are some powerful new metrics, and you'll have to get more detail in uh, specific uh, videos about each of these. But the CPI, a corneal performance index, uh, plus you already know the DLI, will yield a QVI, a quality vision index which should be much better and more usable than a Snell and Acuity. Uh, look for more details on each of these in their own video. There have been changes to the Toric planner as well. All lenses will be available. You can add any new lenses that come out. You can select what lenses you have available. In other words, change the database and limit it to just the ones you use. You can actually pick what sort of cylinder you want to end up with, target your result, and the calculator will allow you to pick which lens gives you the type of result you want. Let's say you want to end up with half a diopter with the rule. You can do that. There are some other displays, including the Prime dashboard. It will get its own video. And the corneal spherical aberration, which will also get its own video. These are very important tools, very useful. You can see there's so many new things in this software. You can see the navigation's changed. And so, the idea is that there are ease of use enhancements, there's tear film index, there's color capture uh, photography, uh, infrared, there's the corneal performance indices, the quality of vision. There's just a whole lot in version 7 software. If you don't have it, you should consider upgrading. It'll cost you something, but it'll be well worth it. It makes your eye trace even more usable. The utility and capability of this device is continually expanding, and version 7 software is a major improvement in your eye trace.